Hi, welcome to module 2. In this presentation, we will compare the muscular system of the different domestic animals and highlight their comparative features for identification purposes. As early as now, it is important to point out that the general feature of the muscular system is the same for most of the domestic animals. However, some modifications are present to fit the locomotory behavior of the animals. For the quadrupeds, the muscular system is designed to support the lack of true joint connecting the thoracic limb with the trunk. Likewise, differences in the feeding behavior suggest modifications in the masticatory muscles present. For example, carnivores like dogs have a well-developed temporalis and masseter muscles for the vertical type of mastications, while the herbivores have well-developed tergoidus muscle for the lateral movement of the jaw designed for the mastication of the roughages. In birds, the muscles were adapted for flight, thus some of the well-developed muscles in mammals were reduced or modified in chickens like this one. At the end of this module, each student should be able to review the anatomy of the muscular system and identify the differences or modifications present in the muscular system of domestic animals. To review the basic anatomy of the system, you may find a tabulated list of muscles with their origin, insertion, and their innervation on the PDF copy of this module. This presentation will only highlight the comparative features in the muscular system of the different domestic animals. Let us begin by differentiating the brachiocephalicus muscle. As we recall, this muscle extends from the arm to the head, thus with the name brachiocephalicus. It is divided into clidobrachialis and clidocephalicus by the clavicular intersection or the remnant of the clavicle. The clidobrachialis remain undivided for all animals. However, the clidocephalicus is divided in some and was renamed based on their insertion. In the dog, the clidocephalicus is further subdivided into clidomastoideus because of its insertion at the mastoid process of the temporal bone and clidocervicalis because of its insertion at the cervical vertebrae. In pigs and in ruminants, the clidocephalicus is divided into clidooccipitalis because it has an insertion at the occipital bone and clidomastoideus because it is inserted at the mastoid process of the temporal bone. In the horse, the clidocephalicus muscle is undivided and named as clidomastoideus. Next, we compare the sternocephalicus muscle. This muscle originates from the sternum, particularly at the manubrium or the first sternebra, and inserted at the head, thus with the name sternocephalicus. Depending on the species, it is inserted at different head structures, so variation in the name exists. In the dog, the insertion is divided into two. One is the mastoid process, thus named sternomastoideus, and the other one is the occipital bone, hence sternooccipitalis. In the pig and in the horse, the muscle is undivided. In the pig, it is inserted only at the mastoid process having only sternomastoideus, while in the horse, it is inserted at the angle of the mandible, thus have the sternomandibularis. In ruminants, it is inserted at the mastoid process and additionally in the mandible, thus with sternomandibularis as well. As we recall, the pectoral muscle is divided into superficial and deep pectoral muscle. They can also be named based on the orientation of their muscle fiber. The superficial pectoral muscle is further subdivided into a descending pectoral and transverse pectoral. On the other hand, the deep pectoral can also be named as the ascending pectoral muscle. As shown here, the said pectoral muscles are present in all animals. However, an additional muscle called subclavian muscle is present in all animals except in dogs. It has sometimes been considered as part of the deep pectoral muscle. This muscle is well developed in pigs and horse. It is poorly developed and narrow in ruminants. Again, this muscle is absent in dogs. Most of the modification in birds' musculature is present in the pectorals. Relative to its body, the pectoralis muscle of birds occupy the entire breast area of the bird. 
This is because the pectoral is one responsible for the downbeat during the flapping of the wings. On the other hand, the supracoracoideus muscle is developed for the upbeat movement of the wings. Next, we move to the deltoideus muscle. The deltoideus has two parts, a scapular and an acromial part. In dog and in ruminants, both parts are present. However, in pigs and horse, the acromial part is missing. Only the scapular part is present. Remember that horse and pig do not have an acromion in the scapula and their scapular spine fades distally. Known as the strongest extensor of the elbow, the triceps brachii has three heads, the lateral, long, and the medial heads. However, in dogs, an additional accessory head is present. The common digital extensor is a strong muscle with several tendinous intersections. The tendon of insertion is split according to the number of functional digits in the different species. Thus, we can compare them based on the number of tendon of insertion. There are 5 in dogs, 4 in pigs, 2 in ruminants, and 1 in horse. The lateral digital extensor is situated caudal to the common digital extensor muscle on the lateral surface of the antebrachium. In horse, there is only one insertion at the lateral side of the cannon bone. Also, one tendon of insertion is present in cattle and it is present at the fourth digit. In dogs, it inserts on the digit 3, 4, and 5. The internal obturator muscle is an inner pelvic muscle. The action of this muscle is mainly for the rotation of the hip. This fan-shaped muscle covers the obturator foramen as shown here. However, this muscle is present only in carnivores and in horse. In pigs and in ruminants, this muscle is known to be the intrapelvic part of the external obturator muscle. The hamstring muscle is composed of three fleshy muscles, the most lateral biceps femoris, the middle semitendinosus, and the most medial semimembranosus muscle. This is true for dogs and for horse. However, in ruminants and in pig, the superficial gluteal muscle is fused with the biceps femoris, thus with a new muscle called gluteobiceps. Here you can see the separate superficial gluteal muscle with the biceps femoris of dog. In ruminants, like in the case of a goat, the superficial gluteal muscle is fused with the biceps femoris. Next, we compare the sartorius muscle. The sartorius is a strap-like muscle arising from the ilium and inserts on the medial side of the stifle. In dogs, the sartorius has two muscle bellies called the cranial and caudal part. In ruminants and in pigs, it is divided proximally as shown here. However, in horse and in cats, it remains undivided. Finally, the soleus. Soleus is an insignificant muscle except in pigs and in man. This muscle arises from the fibula and joins the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. It is present in horse and in cattle as shown here. It is also present in cats but this muscle is absent in dogs. The heads of the gastrocnemius and the soleus are collectively called the triceps surae. And that concludes our discussion on the major differences in the muscular system of different domestic animals. Take note that we compared only the major comparative features and highlighted the things that need to be identified. There are a lot of minor variations per animal and it is suggested to read the recommended reading materials and references provided.